G'day mates, today I'm going to be taking a look at one of these, which is the SD card out of the Discovery 5. So I'm going to chuck it in my Mac and see what we can find out about the card itself. In terminal in OS X is type disk util list. So at the moment I don't have the SD card plugged in at all. So what this is showing me is anything that's already been mounted on the file system. Now, what I'm going to do, I've just plugged in the SD card. You can actually see that it's mounted on the desktop there. So if I do this command again, we can then see this bit down the bottom. That's the card. So it's an eight gigabyte card and it's formatted in FAT32. So should be readable by this computer. So that's the first step. We'll have a look into it a little bit further. Now we can see, I did actually get it wrong before. When you do this command, it uses the entire disk space of your entire disk. So obviously in this circumstance, eight gigabytes, and it's now generated. If we go back to here. So it's 8.01 gig. So as long as you have an SD card that's eight gig or bigger, you can do this command again. Basically what you need to do first is, again, type disk util list, see what disk you've actually got listed here. So we've got disk four. So if you've, obviously if you unplug that and then we plug it back in, we get disk four again. You run this same command, but reversed. So you're gonna say the input file is the image file we created and the output file, so that's what OF stands for, is slash dev slash disk4 and then you press enter. Just be aware that when you run that command it's not going to be, you know, it's not like Windows where it's going to warn you and say oh this might delete a file or something, it's savage and will just delete everything so if you're going to do this make sure that you know what you're doing. But that way at least if you needed to, if you've got another car that had the in-control system and you want to copy whatever's on that SD card to another one, this is one way of doing it. Just in case you can't get the normal in-control stuff to work, which I've read a lot about with people saying they've got issues with it, especially on Macs, this is the other way to do it, provided that you can get an image of another car. And what would be interesting is, I haven't been able to see if it's actually possible yet, but in theory, I think I can actually extract this now. Let's see if that'll work. Um, yeah, so that's the image file that I'm actually looking at now, not the disk itself. Just wanted to see this. Yeah, so in the brand.txt file, you've got Land Rover. And there is also, I thought it was in the license folder, but maybe it's somewhere else. It's another folder that actually has a version. Let's see, it might be in maps. No, that's not in here. But I'd say that if you did want to pull this off another um, car, the version that you can find in one of the files that I can't remember where it is right now, uh, will actually be able to tell you what version number you have, which it may actually be. In here, you've got this global CFG file and you can actually open, this will just extract it. I'm just gonna bring that over here now. Close some of these windows. In your global CFG, you'll have a version number, so it'd be interesting to compare against other SD cards and see what the version difference is. But the thing that I'm really interested in and I just read about was apparently you're not meant to put files on the SD cards, but I would say that the way that it references the data with what we we're looking at before, you should in theory be able to put something like music on it or possibly a small video file and get it to play. So I might see if we can get have give that a try and see what happens. 
Yeah, this is just a quick video to show you what's on the actual SD card and a way of backing it up if you really wanted to and a way of sort of copying them between cards. I hope you enjoyed it.